Hello music lovers and clarinet nerds. I made another video about double tonguing earlier. Uh, I watched it and then I thought to myself, I, perhaps I can do this a little bit better by uh, being more clear about different uh, exercises um, that I mentioned in that video. So uh, here we are. Double tonguing. What is double tonguing? Double tonguing is very fast articulation on the clarinet. <laughs> Like that. It's basically saying ta ka ta ka ta ka instead of ta ta ta, which is the normal um, articulation on the clarinet. You make ta 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 by having the tip of your tongue on the reed going ta. Let me see if I can show you here. Ta 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 ta. Like that. I prefer to have my my tongue around here. Around here. Okay, good. Like from behind. Here instead of at, at the tip, um, uh, but if a lot of people use. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to do that. That's what I prefer. And uh, when it comes to double tonguing, I basically taught myself uh, with the philosophy that I wanted a fast articulation that would sound exactly the same as my ta. So in other words, to make the ka sound like a ta. And I started practicing this by doing stuff slowly like this for example <laughs> so i play a c mezzo forte forte nuance play as legato ish as possible try and not make a gap between the notes now you can hear of course you can hear a gap between the notes when I do the ka sound, right? But I really, I'm really trying to make the ka sound as uh, as soft as delicate as the T sound. Ta ta ka. Oof, so such wonderful singing. And um, in order to make them sound alike, um, you really need to slow things down, like like this. Play fermatas on the C. Keep the nuance, keep the nuance, very, very steady, and uh, basically do the ka and see how that sounds, what you need to do to make it sound like a ta sound. So um, what I need to do, what I think you all need to do, is to, to use a lot more air on the ka. So if I would take away, if I were to take away the clarinet and do the, the same thing, it would probably sound something like this. So these bursts of air on the ka sound, because if I um, that act actually makes it quite even when playing. You can almost see that I'm doing stuff like that. Now um, have some patience here. We're doing it slowly, and it doesn't sound so good right now. And I've uh, yeah, I've been practicing quite a few years uh, this, and it's because it's difficult to do this slowly. But I think you need to do it slowly in order to make it sound really good. So uh, for, as an example, I'll take away the bursts of air and use the exact same amount of air um, with the clarinet, and it will sound something like this. <laughs> There's a big gap and you won't get this articulation um, that you want. Okay, uh, so use the, these bursts of air sometimes it will be too much and it, it will be a perhaps it will squeak. And sometimes it'll be too little. But the more you practice it, the closer you will get to finding to, to, to find the technique in order to make it sound the same nuance and almost the same articulation. So uh, this exercise, you bring it uh, uh, further by doing something like this. You go up in the, in the, in the register, still slowly and important boys and girls, legato-ish, no gap. Because uh, when you play legato, that means that your air stays turned on, all right? So and that that's um, that's the um, that's the key to everything, right? So let's try this one for example. What is it sound? Okay, okay, good, good. Yeah. Uh, 
and you continue upwards. I'm doing ta ka ta ka like that, and you will notice that uh, that uh, you will notice that uh, C where we started going up to A that will be fine. We're in C major scale here. Um, you can of course choose whatever scale, but I would recommend an easy scale so you don't have to worry about difficult um, f uh, yeah difficult stuff for the fingers, difficult fingerings. So um, C up to A is fine, but B natural up here after the register switch uh, will be significantly much more difficult to do the ka sound because you need so much more air. So uh, really use your ears and, uh, and listen, listen, keep the legato air and listen how it sounds. Is it too little? Perhaps stay a few few seconds on the B to, 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 to listen for it. Is it too much? Too much air? You get the squeak. So you just listen, have patience, you will find it eventually. Something like that. Keep moving upwards and perhaps go down again just to make sure that you get all the notes. Now, in order to put this, uh, you, you often do the um, double tonguing in a scale, right? The, the, that's the most common thing to do. Okay. Um, so, a good way to practice scale double tonguing is to do this one. Now it's, it utilizes the exact same stuff that we've been talking about um, and you combine, you have different combinations of articulations here. So let's uh, play through, so slowly and legato is air in mezzo forte. <laughs> So if you look at it closely, I first played ta 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 ta, and then ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta, trying to make them sound um, equally even, and then ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka, and last but not least ka 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 ka. I know what ka ka means in English. In Swedish, it means cookie. So. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's very, very, uh, it's very, very good because you train to um, to switch back and forth in different combinations to do the taka and do it slowly, legato-ish air, and then you let me see where is my there it is. So you uh, you just put it to the next level of the evolution of this one. You just go up one bit. <laughs> Okay, I'm doing it faster now to, to just uh, to don't uh, I don't want to uh, spend more of your time than I have to but at least I wasn't talking quite much so perhaps I'm doing that anyway okay so um, that's a good exercise to keep moving upwards uh, you will notice that it gets more difficult when you get up to on D here la da 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 di da 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 di a perfect pitch um, and then on the car I really need to almost bounce and you get to almost that kind of sound but have patience have patience play it slower slowly than I did and you will get there you will get there I promise I promise I promise have patience Play slowly and use what kind of air? So rhythmization of the double tonguing, this little scale, ta 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 ta, is done very. It's, this is a very good way to do it. You do it like this. So let me try it. And the next one, you put the long note on the car. Uh, 
I'm trying to make the note as long as possible to make sure that the air stays on all the time, boys and girls. Legato is metro forte, no excuses. Um, good. Let's move on. So, you can also take this exercise to uh, another level if you want to, 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 um, to elongate the, the scales. <laughs> and moving upwards and so on and so on I'm playing a little bit faster yeah just to I don't wanna uh, be I waste your time so okay that's basically it you can take this exercise you can swap them go downwards whatever so but remember start slowly use legato-ish air and play them in mezzo forte forte okay good now finally some fun stuff triple tonguing oh for me basically it's the same thing as double tonguing you just use you use the taka 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 in different uh, different combinations so for example if you look at this one uh triple tongue woohoo uh it says taka ta taka ta ta and that's for me the most common um combination that i use of this um uh, the syllables? No, no. Uh, uh, I will paste the correct word in here, probably. Okay. So, for example, if you try this exercise, it's the same as the, the very first exercise. This one, uh, the triple tongue is exactly the same as this one, just different, a little bit faster, perhaps, and a, a different uh, combination. So let's try it. <laughs> So, yeah, do it slowly, practice these combinations. You can also do um, optional articulation for triple tongue. Some people like to do this instead. And I use this one sometimes. Um, uh, it, it depends on the, on the situation, but most of the times when I play triple tongue, I've used this one, the one you just saw. So, and uh, evolution of this one, next level, you can see here, it's the kind of thing as you level up the double tonguing and put it in scale, but in triplets though. You can elongate it as well if you want to. So, but stay, start slowly, don't uh, rush like I did, but I've been practicing for a few years, so I take the liberty of doing so. Okay, and the advanced, uh, advanced level we have right here. This is the most fun to play triple tongue, like... <laughs> For example, in uh, Crusel F minor, the uh, last moment. Uh, yeah, I have to practice it. I'm, I'm a bit too fast, I think, for my own good. But um, yeah, that's an advanced version. So let work. Uh, let's work a little bit with how to practice this one. You do a rhythmization like this, all right? Go back to the C major, so like this. Okay, legato ish air, mezzo forte, every note as um, as long as possible, and then you switch to articulation. So look at the one, look at the here. So now the long one is on the ka. Okay, don't rush like I did. So, good, and I mean, that's it. Did I miss anything? What were, uh, am I being unclear? Am I talking too much, too little? Please. Uh, leave a comment. I'll be happy to help. Um, subscribe if you want to and like if you want to. Bye-bye.